What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's video, we are detailing this Jeep Sport and we're doing a full detail on it. All right guys, so the Jeep Sport is here. This customer, actually you can check out their other video that we did, their Ford Police Interceptor. You can click up in the card above. So the next day we had their Jeep in for the full detail, which is our diamond. So the Police Interceptor was our paint enhancement to remove those ugly water spots and it really came out great. Not 100% because water spots are super difficult to remove, especially if they've etched into the paint but it came out really, really well. So now we're going to be working on the Jeep. Now the Jeep is another story. This is going to be the diamond service. So it's the full interior and exterior and the interior is pretty gross. Exterior isn't too bad, but it will receive a full wash, clay bar and a machine applied sealant. And we'll show you guys what we're gonna use for the exterior, but let's show you guys the interior because it is a wreck. Hi boy, you silly boy. So guys, if you're enjoying content like this, and I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell. That way you get notifications each time these videos drop each week and you don't miss stuff. So guys, let's look around the vehicle. I have all the doors open here so we can clearly see what's going on on the inside. Now the carpets are black, but they are pretty bad. So we're gonna have to vacuum and brush this aggressively using our air compressor, maybe even the drill brush to get all this stuff out. Under the mat, not that bad. So all around the edges and the mat itself. The seats, well, this type of material can be annoying to clean. So we'll try our best to get this material clean. It's interesting, you can see the Jeep lettering through here. It's kind of cool, but then it kind of looks like stains also, which is kind of weird. So kind of messes with your eyes as you're trying to clean it. But we'll clean all this stuff up. Same goes with the center console. All that nasty stuff we will clean up. The whole dash area is not that bad. So it looks like mostly the center console area is really bad. Doors are pretty bad. As we move on to the back, the back is, I would say, the worst. So all of the floors, the carpets here, really, really bad. All sorts of stuff here. Same goes with the seats. They are really, really stained up badly. So. We're going to be using some specialized cleaners for this material and of course steaming everything, all sorts of nasty gunk down here. And the doors, I don't know what that is. It's something that's melted. If it's a crayon or food, I'm not sure. We'll steam that and hopefully remove it all. Now, the good thing is the trunk area is not that bad at all. Huh, that's good. Just this front area is really bad in the passenger seat back area. So yeah, these stains are pretty bad. We'll do our best to clean them up. Carpets, really bad. And this material, this material can be a challenge to vacuum. So we'll do our best with that. But with all the different brushes and attachments that we have, it will clean up. More sticky stuff in there. And then this seat here. So the front seats aren't too bad. The back seats are gonna be the worst. And the carpets here, pretty bad. But again, it's all around the edges. The center, the middle of the carpets, not as bad. Don't know what this stuff is here, so we'll steam that heavily and clean it up. Door jams will certainly need to be cleaned up. And as we look around the exterior of the vehicle, wheels and tires, the norm, they're not too bad. The paint is white, but it's definitely stained. Lots of burr droppings, lots of pollen and tree gunk and the windshield cowl area definitely needs to be cleaned degreased and dressed the whole front area lots of plastic on this jeep all needs to be cleaned and dressed all the bottom pieces here are called plastic about half this vehicle is plastic all right so let's get started hi what are you doing Really? We begin with our usual rinse and pre-wash phase. Now you guys must know the process by now. Rinsing and degreasing with an all-purpose degreaser like SuperClean, Meguiar Citrus Power Cleaner Plus, P3 
PNS, APC, or any other cleaner of your choice. Dilute it to either 10 to 1 or 4 to 1. It helps to remove the majority of the dirt and grime before the contact wash. And we even pull the door handles out and blast them clean. Got a little schmutz on my face. Foaming and contact washing now while using the clay towel speeds up the process. Remember that we already performed a thorough pre-wash and the majority of the dirt and particles have been removed. So washing in this method is safe and effective. If you want to foam and rinse it off and then contact wash, go right ahead. But we have tried it both ways and find this method not only faster, but the end result is the same. After the final rinse, we dry all the door jams and dress the rubber boots in each door jam, including the trunklet area.
carpets took us the longest to clean. We really focused on brushing and releasing the dirt, sand, dog hair, and any other particles so that they're released and vacuumed up easier. It can sometimes be a challenge to vacuum these low nap carpets, but the end result is so satisfying. Now the light tan seats had some isolated stains, but we don't want to oversaturate these cloth seats. So we used Meguiar's tannin stain and fabric rinse to gently remove those stains. A little steam and agitation also helped. The seats dry extremely fast and the stains are gone without risk of wicking.
The carpet mats were thoroughly vacuumed and brushed. Plus, we used the lily brush to remove the fine dog hair embedded in them. Again, no extraction was necessary. They didn't have any stains to remove. Just lots of particles, sand, and dog hair. So steaming and brushing was all that was needed. Go ahead and extract them if you want to feel better, but as a business, time is money and we will not do something that is not needed. Real detailers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Detailing is our main business, not a hobby or a side gig. We know how to find the balance between quality and profitability. All right guys, so interior is now complete and I have the mats drying. Interior is drying, it came out amazing. I have to tell you that the Meguiar's fabric rinse and tannin stain remover and the protein stain remover, those are pretty much magical potions. They are amazing for this type of upholstery. So I'll have links down below. Try that stuff out, it is incredible. I don't use APCs anymore on fabric like this because it could be difficult to extract that stuff out and you might be pulling more stuff out of those seats. The tannin stain remover and fabric rinse and the protein stain remover, amazing. Try it out for yourselves. All right, so now we're going to protect the outside. So I usually do this before I do the inside, usually on my mobile jobs, but today we're at our house. We have the customer coming to us. We take our time a little bit more. So first we're going to protect all of the trim and especially all of the grill parts in here that are difficult to get into, all the honeycomb grill parts, we're going to be using the Stoner's Trim Shine. On the rest of this, we're going to be using the Lithium Trim Serum. So let's get to um, shining up all the little honeycomb areas first, and then we'll get to the Trim Serum, and then we'll get to the paint, and we're going to be using Lithium Gloss Sauce for the paint. This stuff is really, really nice. We're gonna machine apply it, and it's gonna be super glossy, super slick. So let's get started. So this stuff is nice. It does create a little bit of an overspray, but don't worry. It's not that big of a deal. It wipes off the paint and glass easily. Awesome. And I'm going to spray the rest of this front grill with this stuff. And then we'll get all the bottom.
So let this sit, we'll come back and wipe it down and it'll look awesome. Same goes for the windshield cowl. And man, this, this cowl is deep. It collects a lot of junk. Seedlings are getting everywhere. They're annoying. Again, let it sit, it'll soak in. We'll wipe it when we're done. So for the rest of the trim, lithium trim serum, stuff is pretty gooey but it produces awesome results. And just work it into the plastic, let it sit, and come back and wipe off anything that hasn't soaked in. There's a lot of plastic on this thing, so this, is, uh, this might take a while. Hi. Mister, you're getting your tail fuzz all in the dressing. Oh, that just made a mess. We love to machine apply waxes and sealants in this manner. It's fast and efficient. We use the DA polisher on speed four, just enough to apply and lightly polish, leaving the paint glossy and smooth. We also use less product than hand applying, at least for us. We've tried it both ways and find this method to be the best for us. If you still love hand applying protectants and you feel that you're fast and efficient, then great, continue doing what you do best. No need to change your method if it works for you and if the end results are the same. So after the main waxing is done with your polisher, I'm gonna go back over some of the small areas that I couldn't reach with the polisher. So like around here, underneath the door handles, these areas just need a little bit more attention to protect, but quick and easy. Mister, what are you doing? I see you. At least back here, I was able to pop this trunk lid up and actually get in there around the edges here, nice and close. So if you can do that, then it'll make your life easier. Hi, buddy. And under here, couldn't quite get everything under here with the polisher. All right, so with that done, let's begin to wipe off the dried wax residue. And wow, that, that is nice. If you're having trouble removing any types of waxes or sealants uh, in the sun, just use a little bit of quick detailer or even a spritz of water. And it helps in setting the waxes or sealants and also removal of any light residue. But that, that looks awesome. If you see any little areas that need extra attention, a little smudge here and there, then just use your app, just use your applicator 
to remove it and then polish away and you'll be good. All right, so with the rest of the paint all wiped down, I'm gonna go back with a separate towel and wipe down all of the plastics and knock down that shine, get any residual dressing off of it, and it's looking really nice. And I have my other wax towel in my other hand, because if it does get onto the paint, then I'll just quickly wipe it off and it's not a problem. And I'll wipe it off the glass here to start, and then I'm gonna come back with my glass cleaner, of course, and finish the rest. And especially in this area, I'm gonna have to take some time to wipe down all the little grill parts here because you have chrome in amongst the plastic. So, of course, the chrome is gonna have the dressing all over it, but that's okay. Wipe off the residual off the plastic and I'll just go back over it with my clean wax cloth and just polish up the chrome because it's already been cleaned and it looks great. It just needs a little bit of touching up and that's it. But remember we use the stoners up here and it's absorbed into the plastic really well. So just wipe off the residual and it will look beautiful. So I'm just gonna take my clean wax towel here. Just go over the chrome. Looks nice. The lettering up here. Always go over that, double check inside all of the lettering. You can usually get your towel and your fingernail and fingertip to get into all these little areas of the lettering and make it look awesome. Nice. And don't forget this area. I already have a bunch of seedlings in it, but that's okay. Just, just wipe them and blow them out if you do have them here, if you do have them in there. All right, next to last thing, tires, wheels, I'm gonna be using Detailer Pro Series uh, Gloss Tire Gel. I don't use this too often. I have it in my garage. I use it every once in a while. It's a pretty thin dressing, but it actually looks nice. Really easy to apply, but it is a little bit watery, so apply it, let it sit, and it will soak into the tire and look better. And I'm going to dress these wheel wells with it too, just to make them look nice and black and give them some depth and just a little bit of bead maker for the wheels, just to aid in glossing up and uh, protecting the wheel for a little bit. There. All right, that looks great. We'll let this sit, and if we need to come back and wipe it down, we will, but we'll let that sit for now. All right, glass is next, and pretty much last. And the glass is already cleaned inside and out, but because I dressed everything, it smudged up all the corners. So. That's why I'm only just using one towel. It's just to clean up the edges and make it look nice. So kind of a final glass cleaning wipe down.
All right, the Jeep is done. Looking super glossy. Yeah, awesome reflection. Plastics are looking clean and dressed. There was a lot of plastic on here. Wheels are nice and glossy and that tire shine actually kind of melted into the rubber really nice. So that looks awesome. So again, all the plastics are nice and dressed. Windshield cowl is nice and dressed. Looks great. All the glass is cleaned. All this little trim around here is all dressed and wiped down. Of course, we had to, you know, kind of double back over to clean the glass, even though the glass was already done, but sometimes you just have to do that. Let's check out the interior. This came out fantastic. Lots of brushing and using the air compressor, variety of brushes, but everything cleaned up really nice. Same with the seats. They look almost brand new. Cup holder and center console area, nice and clean. Radio area, nice and clean. Steering wheel, all the knobs and buttons cleaned and looking great. Same with the door panel here. This fabric here was all steam cleaned and all these little pockets were taken out and cleaned inside there. And of course, all these areas can be tough to get to, but with your, but with a variety of brushes and the air tools, they cleaned up great. So I'm going to close the door here because the seedlings are trying to get in. They look amazing. Same with the carpets. They cleaned up great. So other than some damaged plastic and fraying carpet, there's not much you can do with that. Other than that, it looks great. But lots of grandkids go in this vehicle and uh, well, they kind of uh, wreck it, <laughs> but that's okay. We can clean it, bring it back to looking nice. So we use the Meguiar's tannin stain remover and fabric rinse and protein stain remover on these seats. The combination of those two are amazing. They produce some incredible results without having to extract. No wicking, no browning, no drawing back. Amazing. All the door jams are spotless, nice and clean. And we're looking good. All right guys, so the Jeep is done. Inside, outside, everything. So interior really came out beautiful. Those seats can be a pain to clean and you don't want to oversaturate them. They can be even worse if you oversaturate them. So using the Meguiar's fabric rinse and tannin stain remover and their protein remover, those two combined are an amazing cleaning combination. So you want to use that tannin and uh, fabric rinse first. That's going to attack any of the tannin stains and then use the protein stain a little bit on top of it. And they actually will combine and start to foam a little bit. They actually have a, a chemical reaction and they can clean up the nastiest and the hardest of upholstery to clean. As you saw, it's completely dry, nothing drew back, and there was no extractor used. You don't always need to use the extractor. Yes, I have one, I'll use it for mats and sometimes upholstery, but I really try to stay away from that because you don't wanna oversaturate the seats. We use these two cleaners combined with steam and it eliminates the stains. And now the seats are completely dry and looking amazing. So definitely try that stuff out for yourself. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like it, share with others who may enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. That way you get notifications each time these videos drop each week and you don't miss stuff. And if you want links to any of the tools or products that we use, check out the description down below. I'll have as much of the stuff linked down there as possible. It'll go to either Amazon or Car Supplies Warehouse. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great week. Take care.